there. I'm about to start the unboxing process of the DWZ DD paddleboard. This is an inflatable paddleboard and it's one of the most, if not the most affordable paddleboard out there on the marketplace. So I'm going to give it a, a try, check it out, see if it holds up to the fancier paddleboard that I also own and give you all the details. <laughs> Okay, here are my first impressions. Number one, the bag. I love it. This carrying bag is so much better than the mesh bag that my high-end paddleboard came in. I was constantly worried about ripping the mesh bag. This also has a much bigger opening rather than just the top opening where I'm trying, it really takes two people to slide the rolled up paddleboard into the bag. Um, this unzips and the bag itself is pretty lightweight and it unzips on three sides and so it's got this huge aperture to put the paddle board in the one thing i'm going to be worried about with this bag or not necessarily worried but i'm going to have to take this precaution is i'm going to have to dry my inflatable paddle board 100 before i stick it in here i do not want this bag to start to stink so that's a little different than the mesh bag but um, I'm actually really pleased with it. You saw me jumping around a moment ago with the bag on my back, and I'm really excited about how much it weighs as well. On to the pump. The pump feels really similar to like almost exactly parallel to the high-end brand, but you'll see that I have now attached this screw on a couple of times and it keeps kind of unscrewing. Maybe there's something that I'm doing wrong here, but I'm gonna fiddle on that and, and see if I can get it to attach and stay better. This is the hose to the pump. Without the hose, the pump is worthless. But otherwise it feels exactly the same and yeah, maybe a little elbow grease was all I needed to get that really attached. The ending also looks pretty similar to the one that I had before. So, so far, so good. My high-end paddleboard did not come with a repair kit. Now, that could have been uh, because I purchased it five years ago, or it could have been because they didn't include a repair kit, and that would have been an extra cost. Or it could have been an accident. Um, I remember it didn't include a leash and I emailed them about it and they promptly sent me a leash without any questions. Speaking of leash, I love it. The leash feels good, feels sturdy, feels exactly the same quality as the high-end paddleboard. It is a little bit um, shorter, I believe, don't quote me on that, but um, it looks the same. And in fact, a slightly shorter leash might be better so the paddleboard doesn't get quite so far away from you. There's also some kind of little locking mechanism here, which I'm excited to check out once it is all set up. The paddle. Okay, this is probably where the biggest difference is going to be made. This paddle feels a little bit heavier, not by much, but if you're out on the water for hours, that little amount is going to make a difference. The shape and the size is pretty darn similar. Similarly, my higher end paddleboard was also two pieces. This was two pieces that I put together. And similarly, it had this ability to adjust, which to be honest, I haven't fooled around with very much, but I am going to explore that in just a moment. Oh, here we go. Even easier. All right, that's even easier than the high end paddleboard that I have. Let's talk about the fin. So also very similar, but a different mechanism for locking in. I can't speak to this. Um, this tiny little apparatus here seems to be very, very flimsy. Like it doesn't look like it would uh, withstand a lot of force, but we'll find out when it's in action and once I get it on. And then a little manual came with it. And also we've got the strap. Now this strap, you, I gotta say, is very flimsy, but it's not actually used on the water at all. It's used once you have rolled up or folded up your paddleboard and it kind of holds it together while you're getting into the bag. So I don't know if that means anything, but it's definitely not, the, not as sturdy as the other strap that I got from the higher end manufacturer. 
Okay, so now we're going on to the paddle board itself. Let me show you something I was really happy with. These little foam <laughs> cushions around the fins. I don't know how much I'll be using them, but I'm not gonna be throwing them away because when I store this or when I carry it in the backpack, if those fins touch my back, they dig in so much. So being able to take these off and put them on and kind of protect those fins um, I imagine it's also going to be really nice for putting it on top of a car or even throwing it in the back of a car or probably a large car. And um, I'm excited to to have those and hopefully won't lose them. 270 pumps later. Turns out I am not an ISUP expert. So I'll tell you what I did wrong. Number one, I was putting the hose on the wrong part of the pump. It does not go here unless you're trying to rapidly deflate your inflatable paddleboard. So my bad, it goes up here. And I knew that from my last pump, but I just didn't see it for some reason. The second thing that slowed me down a little bit was I did not open the valve. The valve is what's gonna make it easier to get more air in the pump that you can therefore push out. So keep the valve closed when you're trying to deflate and open it when you're trying to inflate. But 270 is pretty much standard and it's probably a little less than my older paddle board, which is six inches longer and the same thickness. Now my other paddle board um, may have been a little bit more narrow. So this, the width and wideness of this one is going to be a little more stable on choppy water, but it's also going to be a little bit slower. It's going to be more amenable to having a dog or a family member or child with you on the stand-up paddleboard. And for another adult, just make sure that you're looking at what it can actually hold and make sure that your PSI is in the green zone, like for sure, for sure. So what was 270 pumps for me? I definitely feel a little bit of flesh. I definitely got into the fat burn zone. My watch told me my heart rate was 120 something. Um, and that's okay. Uh, so if I want to, I can buy an electric pump to inflate this. Um, a couple more things that I'm really pleasantly surprised by. So this has a bigger bungee cord area on the front where you can really easily put like an entire backpack, you can slide your, um, your um, actual paddle in here if you're just gonna be kind of staying still for a while. And I always, uh, just because of location I tend to use my paddleboard in, I always bring my shoes on the paddleboard with me so that they don't fall into the water or somebody doesn't accidentally take them. Um, there is a handle, which is basically the same as my old one. I The valve for inflating is 100% better. I don't know if that's just that the technology has gotten that much better, but this valve is a huge, um, hugely uh, big upgrade from my high-end board that's, again, like four or five years old. And then lastly, there is, I don't know if I'll be able to show this, but there is the D-ring um, on the top here, and that's great for towing the um, cushioned area with this like foamy, I think it's like an eco-friendly foam, is way bigger on this inflatable than on my old one, so that's really nice. And otherwise, I'm just really pumped to get this out on the water and to try it out. So I'm also really pleased with how the fin fits in. It slides in really, really easily. This um, little attachment here that locks it in um, still feels a little bit um, not quite as sturdy as I'd like it to be. However, it now that I know how it works, it kind of slides through and clicks in. I actually think it's okay for the purposes that it um, that it serves. So the fin itself is already in this little groove really, really snugly, and this clip just locks it in. The only tricky thing was getting the clip out. Like that was actually a little bit rough on my thumbs, but who knows, maybe I just have weak thumbs. So 
that is my review of the fin. Look at this beautiful fall day. The conditions are so perfect for paddleboarding today. I can't stand it. So happy I'm out. So after taking the paddleboard out for a spin, I give it a thumbs up. I really think it's a phenomenal deal that there's a couple of pieces of technology that seem to have gotten better since my more high-end five-year-old paddleboard was created. Um, the only challenges I had with this paddleboarded package were a little bit with getting the paddle to stick. And that overall, I think the design of the paddle, which I don't have in my hands right now to show you, but it was a little more ergonomic than the ones that you have to screw on. It was like a little tab, but you still have to screw the tab. And I wasn't quite able to get it right and had to keep fiddling with it a little bit while it was on the water. Um, and then the other thing was I'm going to have to bring something like a Sharpie or something to push on that little lock tab to slide the fin out when I'm done using the paddleboard and I'm about to put it away. Other than those two relatively trivial things, the paddleboard, or sorry, the paddle itself is not trivial, but I um, have a feeling once I get it right, it will be fine. Um, but other than that, I've been really, really happy. I had a beautiful paddleboard session, and now it's just going to be kind of find out if it lasts the test of time. I'll update this review if I have any challenges in the future.